Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Today's video I will be using Studio One. I'm gonna do my best to kind of combine a lot of different tools and methods together just to show you guys how to put tracks together from scratch. So I won't be using any samples or anything like that and just give you some pointers on how I would do it and hopefully that'll provide some benefit to you. I'm in this particular project, I have the tempo set to 148 beats per minute. Um, for me, when I'm doing tracks like this, you're usually starting with the drums or the chords. I would say the chords will help you get the vibe faster, but the drums will help you keep the uh, energy faster. So that part's going to be completely up to you. To make this simple though, I'm going to start with chords. So for you, that might be a sample pack, a MIDI pack. What I'm going to do is use easy keys and let this dictate the rest of my elements. So the first thing you gotta decide on when you do these kind of songs is what key you wanna use. And then out of these, man, for me, it's like Russian Roulette. It's just whatever, <laughs> whatever you feel like. So I'm gonna do D sharp today. And then within Studio One's environment at the bottom, I'm gonna set the key to D sharp minor as well. So these two match. And now with the trap stuff, a lot of their melodies are two bars, but their chord progressions are usually around four. And that's kind of hard to describe without actual beat going, but take my word for it. So I'm in double time, so what I'm gonna do is create four blocks here. And easy keys is just a quick way for me to come up with chord progression. So this is the space of four bars in regular time, but it's really two bars. So I'm gonna have to double this when I'm done. But I don't need that many chords for my progression. Unlike R&B and pop, a lot of the good trap stuff is only three chords or less. Sometimes it's just two. Let's loop that and play it. Cool. And then I'm gonna copy it double it up and this is going to be about a two bar progression but anyway i'm going to pull out a performance um, i might have a lot of different categories you might be using a different tool so i won't spend too much time describing this but basically i kind of just test different things until i catch a vibe and these are just performance pieces that are going to transform the chords i picked and under tempo if you're easy keys user i do half time up here because my tempo is in double time so it'll sound real crazy if it's normal tempo Cool. So I'm gonna take that, drag it out to its own MIDI track. And then next, what's most important is make sure you have a sound that complements chords very well. So that's your pluck categories, your SYN or synth categories, your pad category, or an ARP. So for this sound, I'm probably gonna go with keys first. And if I don't find anything I like, I'll move to a different category. So that sounds decent. I want to try in a different octave though. So I'm going to do select all and then hold shift key and push up arrow to move it up 12 steps. And that's the most important thing to know about trap because it's bass heavy, your melodies and chords, depending on where your middle C is on your MIDI controller or what tools you're using, it's always going to be higher. Um, a lot of times your beat might not have the right energy because the range of your chords are in the wrong octave. Um, some people would be like C3 or C4. When using synthesizers, that doesn't matter because a lot of these presets, um, they adjust the octave or root you're in to make their sound. So I want to think of it that way. I would use your ear and go, the octave below something sounding like it's screaming. <laughs> the octave be below a lead. That's where I would try to place the chords. So what I'm going to do is complement that. Now this one's a little bit trickier. This one could be a pad or it could be a stab. It could be another synthesizer too. But what I think about when I think about arrangement and songwriting is the next voice or instrument that you add to a beat, no matter what genre it is, make sure it supports it. So since we're leading this space at the in the middle for the voice and the drums, we have the bass at the bottom, the only other elements you could literally add are above this melody, which would be like a lead or a string, and then something closer to the bass. The thing which you're gonna notice with the frequency ranges though, is that as you get lower pitches and lower frequencies, um, they move slower, so there's less notes. And not only do they move slower and you have less notes, you could easily remember that in saying the lower it is, the more rhythmic it is. So think of the kick, think of the bass line. Your other elements that are closer to the bottom, like I'm about to add, think of them as rhythm elements. And then when you get closer to the chords or the melody or the bell or the arp, you think of those as like melodic elements and they're usually higher in frequency and they occur higher in frequency with more notes or, you know, different pitches. 
So for me, that was that that hack just blew my mind up. Like instead of having a really busy baseline in the low end, it usually sounds crazy. And that's why our tempos are the way they are too for that dynamic. But anyway, so let's try Toy EP. And it's synthesized, so it sounds really cool. And I'm literally chasing the bottom of the chords. Also enable your scale, and that's why we set that key earlier. It's by default it shows up here. So D sharp natural minor. So when I draw a key anywhere in the piano roll, I could drag it up to these keys without worrying about landing on the wrong one. So the art of tracing is up to you. <laughs> it's one of those things where like use your ears. But since we're thinking of rhythm, you can kind of imagine you want these stabs or these chords to go where your kick would ideally go. So this will probably be sooner. And we'll highlight these and do shift down to lower it 12 steps or an octave. And do the same exact pattern for these. This is the halfway point. So basically I'm mirroring this, but it's going in harmony with the chords themselves. And all that means is that they're overlying the same notes. You can add more, you can take away, you can add some in-between. Since we have this ghost channel, you can see it. And notice how that I'm off here, but it still sounded fine. Those kind of happy accidents, especially since we're doing this in a very robotic way, leave them. <laughs> so I'm select all, I'm gonna lower it an octave to see if it feels better. Now, because these synths are programmed in different octaves on the synthesizer's oscillator itself, and I'll show you where that is. Usually it's up here where it says detune, or it'll say something like octave plus one. Because that happens, don't trust your eyes, like in terms of knowing where the pitch is. Now at this point, once you got the rhythm element, the stab or the pad or whatever, and you have your melody or your arp, your main chord element, then I recommend doing drums because it's going to be hard to fill in the bass without them and it's going to be really difficult to figure out your melody without them because something about the frequencies of hats and everything changes what your melody is going to be and sound like. So real simple pattern. Now we can do the bass. So I got my 808. And with that, we're going to follow the chords as well. So I'm going to double click the bottom here. I'm going to extend this, the whole two bars. And it's rhythm wise, it's going to follow that kick. But note wise, I'm going to have it follow the stab, which kind of already follows the kick. That's why it's there. So you can kind of see and trace this without actually hearing it. You could even just copy and paste that MIDI file and deduce or reduce the notes if you want to. And make sure it's snapping because you probably want extra notes in your 808 as well. And I'll probably extend these. And that might be too low in frequency. So I'm gonna raise it up an octave. So that going high is okay, but I'm gonna drop it down an octave. So same notes, nearly identical to the first half. And at the end there, I might add extra note. So one last element that you could try to add, um, for me, well, it used to be leads. And leads can be any myriad of sounds, actual lead sound, it could be a string, it could be a pluck or a bell, especially if you're dealing with a trap, trap genre. My only advice for leads and things like that, especially if you don't have words or if you're not writing the hook, is try to stay away from busyness 
Like, don't get in the way or don't dictate a, a melodic pattern that will change the words, especially in something that's repetitive. So try to keep very simple leads for this style of music. Don't do the sustained notes with all these different bends, unlike the 808, right? So I'm gonna use something like this for now. I'm gonna double click under this track, click into it, bring up my keys this time. And then one of my tips for dealing with this, like when you think of the lead, I put my first two notes on the snare and that's just habit. I don't know why it just sounds like you know, a lot of the prolific uh, call and response type things is that the downbeat is usually the chord in the bass and then that melody or that response doesn't pick up until the snare hits or a little bit after even. So that whole first beat is bare of any melody and some of the best tracks. So a good example of that is uh, Dr. Dre's Explosive. If you listen to the call and response between the guitar and the bells is so that spacing is the snare you'll notice the snare hits when the bells begin so i use that for everything so in this particular beat it looks like this So you might not want that. That's not the actual melody. That's just the starting point for the notes. So I want to find a melody that works for this. And it's kind of tricky because you could choose any of those notes that are shown from your chords and notes in between it that's not in your chord. So I stick with the harmonies and notes that overlap and then try to find keys in between. Another cool tip about Studio One is that when you use your cursors, you can go through the notes you put left and right and then move them up and down. So that sounds all right. It's this one that sounds off. Much better. So we're going high actually sounds good too. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this experience by highlighting it and moving it over. I'm using the Alt key to drag it. I'm gonna try it like that. And then since these chords seem identical, now I can copy and paste the whole thing. And I might want to change the rhythm at the end. I might not want it to be the predictable. Once you have something you like and you can live with, <laughs> then everything is just subtraction. So that melody is all right. It's a nice little call response thing going on and there's some variation. That could take you all day, but I say keep it simple. Just stay within harmony, stay on your snare hits to begin to give your first notes, and then connect the dots in between those different ranges. And usually try to keep your melodies less busier than your arc or your chords or less busier than your bass line. Um, in fact, it'd probably be best to listen to the lead with the bass to get a good idea of what's going on. So they go together nice, and I didn't do that intentionally, but that might be the best way to look at it, the call and response between each bass note and each melodic line. Now there are special cases like R&B and stuff that have single sustained leads or single sustained strings. Um, this track doesn't call for that. Most new tracks don't. But just know that you would deviate from this pattern depending on the genre or style you're trying to do. But anyway, now we could drop like the drums and the bass and then play this together to see how it sounds. Now one quick arrangement tip, when you have that kind of energy, especially with this keys I have is kind of like an organ synth, I'm gonna duplicate it and I want to take all of its notes and I want to drop them down octave. Shift down, so it's going to go down 12 steps. And what happens is that'll change the energy of your track completely. And it's cool to, at the beginning of a verse or right after a hook, it's really cool to do that to kind of throw people off or begin your song like that. And then we 
what's cool is you can just go back and forth. So I'm duplicate it again. Yeah, man, it's really simple. And then from here, you go back to your drums, add your percussions, your triplets, your snare rolls, and Studio One it makes it painfully easy because you can open up the eye, name this like verse, and then duplicate it, and then add more variation to it, depending on what you want to do. Call that one hook, call it verse B, whatever you want. It makes Studio One makes everything easy. So hopefully you guys learned something from seeing someone work in this way, um, especially if you've ever been intimidated about learning music theory or playing all the parts by hand, sometimes you just don't have that skill set. And it takes a long time to develop, especially developing each and every key and scale that you choose to work on. But just because we can't do it by ear, doesn't mean we can't do it at all. So I just wanna show you guys that. I appreciate your time and support. Thank you for checking out the Machine Masters today. If you're on social media, be sure to follow us. I'm at MG the Future. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys, peace. Mm -hmm.